So this is one of my toys. It's a 10 kilo kettlebell. It's like 22 pounds. It's nice. I like to play with it. Put tension into my arm. Tension, yeah, because the muscle is contracting. So I need tension to contract it. More and more tension to contract it. And with this grip here, I can play with the kettlebell a little. I can hang it here, I can hang it there. So I can feel how the weight is shifting. Weight is shifting to the right, it's shifting to the left. It's closer to my body, so it's easier to lift. It's further away. <laughs> and here we have a little crochet bird. My auntie made it. It weighs about 50 gram or two ounces. It's very light. It's a bird. It's very light bird. But still, if I concentrate, I can feel how the weight of the little bird is shifting to the left then to the right and forwards. So it's about feeling how I feel the bird. I mean, I can see it. I can see that I hold the bird in my hand. I can also feel it. I mean, the left hand is a little bit hangover to the left, a little hangover to the right. Yeah, I can feel the nuances. But can I feel the bird when it's stuck to the kettlebell? Can I feel that the kettlebell is more heavy then? Can I feel the nuances of the bird, the differences? Well, let's try, let's find out. Okay, so my little bird is glued to the kettlebell. Do I? So my point is, is it possible to feel that there's a bird on here or not? With this difference, 10 kilo and uh, 22 pounds, and here's like 50 gram and two ounces. Can I feel that the kettlebell is more heavy now? I think it's impossible. It's physically to, for us humans to feel this small difference in, in weight with such heavy objects. Do we agree on this? I hope we agree, right? Do you see my point? So my, my point, the thing I want to say, I want to say something about the hip joints. So my hip joints are about here. And on top of my hip joints is the whole upper body. So that's like 40 kilo, 88 pounds, something around this. And then there's the feet. I can feel my feet when I stand. So there's impressions, sensory awareness of my feet. So there's a lot happening. And when I want to work with my hip joint, when I want to feel the details, like in Tai Chi movement, right? for example, uh, forwards, backwards, to the right, to the left. I can feel something. Well, it's like with the weight. It's, it's very hard because there's so much weight on the hip joints. It's impossible to feel the details. It's just not possible. I remember a <laughs> kettlebell, bird, same as with the hip joints. There's so much weight on it. It's impossible to feel the small details, the nuances, the little shift of weight if I'm standing upright. And that's the reason in Feldenkrais class, it's one of the reasons we go on the floor. We need to go on the floor to feel the details, to be able to feel something actually, which you couldn't because there's so much weight in it. Even if you feel really hard, if you really feel inside, oh, I feel inside so strongly, you'll be, <laughs> you're not going to feel anything, uh, not, not, not the details because there's just so much weight on top of the hip joints. Do you see my point? That's why we have to, you have to, I have to go on the floor, lie down on the floor to be able to work with the hip joints. Just for example, it could, could be anything. It could be the spine, could be the chest, could be the feet, could, could, could be the hands, could be anything. We need to lie down to reduce the level of stress, of tension in the body. And you have this minimal, to be able to feel the minimal differences. Mm -hmm. Let me just give you a very short example. Not, no need to play along or to do it. You can, you can just watch and I give you a short example of what you could try out to really relax on the floor and explore your hip joints in fine detail. So the most important thing is you are on the floor. You have something comfy, but need, just not cold and wet, right? Okay, and then you need to rest a little bit so the tension in the body can diminish. That's important. To just wait like one or two minutes, it would be better after meditation or after autogenous training just to lie down and or after sleep so you're really relaxed. So the, the tension in the body is diminished already. Okay, 
and then you're on the floor and just get one foot to standing so just stand one foot if you like you could put one arm up the opposite arm of the leg that's not a necessity if it's easy for you otherwise you put the hands just anywhere so just get one foot to standing that's that's the one thing to remember and for many people there's a lot of tension in this position to hold up the leg because if they would let go of the leg the leg would just flop to the outside and uh, play with that think of that try to find that do i have tension if you really let go would your leg fall to the outside would your leg fall to the inside or will it just keep standing and if it does fall to the outside you might you might want to put a blanket here just a blanket on top take take a blanket tuck it under so that your so that the blanket holds your 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 leg up so you can really let go you can really let go let uh, let the standing leg fall in this sense right oh, that's so comfy i think i'll finish the video later i want to sleep and then when you're comfy with this when the leg is balanced then think of there's six the right th think of a dice a little cube with six sides like one you have in the casino and the, the the sides matter one is different to six and one is different to four and three and five every side has a number every side has importance it's win or lose situation so one is up one side is to the left one is to the right one is down and then what's this direction so that's not up that's forwards and that's up and what's that if that's down so one is behind so we have six six directions think of the sole of your foot to bring your awareness awareness is something we can shift in the body it's like in the kung fu movie you can shift your awareness in the body so shift your awareness to the sole of your foot so you can feel your foot standing and then try to push with the sole of your foot a little bit downwards so that's that's behind is the floor and downwards is where your toes are pointing so you push the foot a little bit just a little bit don't move your leg so we're, we're talking details here details little, little things so you push your foot downwards just a bit so you can feel the sole of your foot just a, a little tension on the sole of your foot when you push the foot downwards okay that's easy that's easy fairly easy isn't it and then you can drag your feet upwards huh? upwards is towards your head just you don't slide you just drag but keep the the foot in place there's a tiny movement you have to relax for this it's kind of a meditation so you have these two directions it's downwards and upwards and then there's left and then there's right yeah you get the idea and then you have forwards will be lifting and backwards will be stomping the the feet in the ground uh, against the ground leaning more against the floor and that's when the magic starts to happen so you have your six direction and this could take you like five minutes or ten minutes or maybe you fall asleep maybe you do it 20 minutes just feel the little positions left right forwards backwards forwards backwards up down no? you have that and when you start pushing against the floor and the pelvis starts to roll and then of course the knee can go to the left and to the right uh, when you push against the floor the knee will start to go downwards yes so that's that's what i want to give you that's what i want you to play with the next six months <laughs> just just these things left right forwards backwards forwards backwards downwards upwards push until your pelvis starts to roll and you can push push so you push through the spine that your head starts to roll uh, find these connections in the body and when you have your arm long you would start to push eventually you would start to push your hand and and work with that and it will make a big difference in whatever you do no matter if it's tai chi or qigong or movement practices uh, if you are like a ufc fighter doesn't matter if you're a marathon runner this will make a difference because you 
working with the details, with the nuances. Instead of the big things, you're now focusing on the nuances. It's something to focus on. And if you're interested in more lessons, I have plenty of lessons, full-blown 40 minutes lesson with lots of movements on my YouTube channel. I have a beginner's course with nine lessons on my YouTube channel. You can work through the nine lessons. If you've never done anything like this, you make a huge difference. Yeah? And I have a workbook out now with the nine lessons in it. So you can have the book, you can get an overview, you can see the connections between the lessons, you can see the strategies I use in the lessons. It's a big game changer to have this kind of workbook and to have this kind of lessons. And I hope this method gets on the radar of the big ones like Rich Roll or Tim Ferriss because you need this. Like high quality, high performing people, they need this. They need to focus, they need to start focus on the details, on the nuances, and not just the big stuff, because the small things matter too. And you can't overlook them all the time. And it's here, it's here for you to take, it's here for you to use, it's fun, it's interesting. Am I even in the picture? I hope so. And see you in the next video. Check out my channel, check out my books. Uh, all the best to you.